All right, we are joined in studio, man. This is exciting. This is one of my favorite people in the world, Brandy. Oh, I know you love him. There's like a little bro love going on. A little. More than a little bit. Actually, I'm going to, the very first time I was ever on radio, the first words I ever spoke, immediately afterward, this man was walking around the hallway to uh, come into the studio to mm-hmm. do his thing, his sports report on the morning show I was working on at the time. And as soon as he came in, I knew it was his gig to do sports. So I stepped right out of the way. And the first thing anybody said to me in radio in terms of just like, you know, performance and you know doing a good job. Right. He saw that I moved out of his way and uh, and, and gave him the microphone. He turns to me and goes, this kid is going to go places. And then he turns and does his <laughs> sports report talking about Mr. Hudson Valley Renegades himself, Rick Solzer. How are you doing, my friend? I am awesome. How are you guys doing? It's been a long time. It has been a, it's too long of a time, way too long of a time. This is your busy time of year, right? This is when it really ramps up. Kind of ramps up right around February. But the, once we hit the middle of May, it's just ridiculous because we open up on Monday night. Mm-hmm. Monday night is opening night. It's a 6.35 first pitch with a schedule magnet giveaway along with fireworks after the ball game. But we go a half hour early to try to get the kids out earlier because I'm told that Tuesday is the absolute positively last day of school in the entire area. Oh, really? That's that's what I'm being told. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that both of my daughters are done. Okay. So we're going to get you out early on Monday night, and then it's the first game of a six-game homestand, and we start all over again. Oh. A launch in the summer. That's the, to me, that's the official opening of summer is when the Renegades start off at home at the I Dutch. I love the way you think. And we have no idea who we got because we were supposed to get our team Sunday night, past Sunday night, and four guys showed up who didn't speak English. So we have no, we couldn't speak to them. We just know they were on the Renegades. Yeah. And then they've been coming in dribs of drabs. Some of the kids are still playing in a College World Series that they haven't signed yet, so they'll come. So the team that will open up on Monday night will most likely not be the team 30% into the, into the season. It's really interesting that you say that because so many guys have come through the, the Renegades organization, and the two that people talk about are Josh Hamilton and Evan Longoria, but you've had a lot of other guys. Right now, the guy that I'm most impressed with is Wade Davis because the past two seasons with the Royals, what a monster that guy has been. Listen, when he got to us, he was a first-round pick. He was a big old hillbilly, and um, he started dating one of the girls in concessions. Oh, really? And which is a, a definite no-no. You're not allowed Ooh. to fraternize. And, wow. And our head of concessions at the time, ex-New York Yankee pitcher Joe Asanio, went up to her and said, listen, Caitlin, bottom line is it's either him or us. And she goes, are you kidding? Later. <laughs> and I DJed his wedding at the, at the Grand a couple of years ago, and I always knew that he had it in him because the dude was filthy. Yeah. But it's one of those things like Dennis Eckersley was, was a mediocre starting pitcher in the major leagues, then he made him a, a closer, and he became lights out. I mean, Wade throws 98, 97 miles an hour when he's the setup man. Now, if you're a starter, you got to dial back on that. But he was a renegade, and he's one of those guys that people don't realize, and he was filthy when he was here. He was unhittable when he was here. That guy last year was top 10 voting for Cy Young as a relief pitcher, which, yep. as you know, is not an easy task. It is not, and he lives locally. He lives in Marlboro. Oh, wow, so I didn't su- know that. So he supports the community. There's one thing he likes more than his family and pitching in the major leagues. He fixes to do himself some hunting. Oh, okay. As long as I'm going to do me some hunting, we got a tree stand out there in the backwoods, and I got some dip, and I'm going to take care of business. That is Wade that. Davis. You know, it's, it's so cool to see somebody come and, and play. You know, for them to stick around at the place that they were in single-A short season and find home. You know what I mean? Like, they show up, and it's not like, you know, he went to Tampa, and now he's in Kansas City. But to be like, you know what, that place had such an impact on me, and I think it has a lot to do with how connected to the community you guys are as an organization. Dude, I would love to say that that's 100% the case, but he married a hot blonde, <laughs> and she wants to live here. So Whatever he, she wants. He found, he found hunting as the reason to stay. I'm telling you. It, it whatever lot, whatever it takes. He is great with the community. All of those things, yes, because he, he volunteers and does clinics in the winter. He does all that stuff. But he came here because this is where his wife wants to live in the off season. Yeah. And so, yeah. But, you know, people don't realize we've had probably 50 kids have made the major leagues. At, at various levels of success, but at least getting listen. Once you have one at bat or throw one pitch in the major leagues, you're in the, you're in the who's who of, of major league baseball, and they can never take that away from you. We've had around 50 kids. That's crazy. And, and you That's really awesome. think about it that way. I mean, it's it's uh, uh, what 10,000 people in the, since the 1860s have been able to say that. You know, it's it's just crazy the amount of of people that have uh, been produced by the organization. And I remember the the first one that I remember being kind of uh, spoken of was Scott Pitsednik in like 05, I think, when the White Sox had that run toward the, uh, the World he Series. Didn't, yeah, he didn't make, the, he didn't make the, the, the major leagues first. Kevin Brown, the catcher on that team, made the, made the, the major leagues first. Oh, okay. Pitsednik is the only ex-Renegades to hit a walk-off game-winning home run in the World Series. That's awesome. 
a man. He's also, you think that he can just do uh, baseball announcing and uh, be an ambassador to the community. He's a savant when it comes yeah. to these things. Yeah, the trivia, too. Speaking of what you do with the games, it's a lot more. We talk about baseball here, obviously, because it's a baseball team. But what you do baseball doesn't matter. the Dutch is kind of, it's secondary to what you guys present. What do you have to look forward to this season? Listen, the games? 95% of the people who come to our games don't come for the baseball. Because the truth is we can't sell baseball because the shortstop, Let's make believe he was my shortstop last year. Let's not make right. believe. Let's make me the shortstop. Right, so Let's do this thing. Oh, Deuce man. is the shortstop. If Deuce comes back to us this year, it's not good for Deuce's career. Mm-hmm. So I can't sell the shortstop. I can't sell baseball, so I have to sell experience. And experience is what it's been about since year one. It's all the goofy stuff. It's the atmosphere. It's the fact that if you like whatever type of music, unless it's Serbo-Croatian love songs, <laughs> you're going to hear it at the stadium. We play a little bit of everything for everybody's taste. We involve kids on the field. We involve adults on the field. We give away great prizes. We have great giveaways. And our food is pretty good. And it's a safe, reasonably priced alternative for family entertainment. We have owned families since 1994. Yeah. And we're very, yeah. very, very thankful for the support the community has given us. And I've, I've grown up with the Renegades. I mean, that's when, in 1994, I was six years old. So my entire childhood has been, sorry, Zoles, I apologize for the oh age thing. God. Uh, but, it's you know, I've grown up with your, so to me, as somebody who grew up in the Hudson Valley, it's it's just been such a part of every summer of my life. It's just kind of Tent pole thing, you know, it's 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 kind of it defines the summertime. So, uh, where can people find out more and all of that information? What you guys are doing in the community, all that. Well, online you can get us at hvrenegades.com, and you can actually print your tickets at home. So you can go online, ch- choose your date, and print your tickets. Or you nice go to the easy. box office. We're open Monday through Friday with regular business hours, nine to five. You can call us eight four five eight three eight zero zero nine four, or. 99.9% of the time, you could show up the day of a game and we'll get you in the building somewhere. Yeah. Well, you know, you guys, uh, you draw, what, f- over 4,000 people a game every single game? And we're, again, very fortunate. In our 22 seasons that we've played, we've sold 99% of our tickets, which is absurd because we have a is very small fun? stadium. Yeah. She's showing her age, <laughs> and we don't have the amenities that a lot of the minor league teams that are coming online have, but... but the people pack the place, they love the place, and we find a way to keep them smiling. Well, summer's about to start, everybody. Make sure you uh, check it out and go to some Renegades games this summer. Uh, Monday, opening day? Monday is the first game of a six-game homestand. Make sure you get out there. It's always a blast. Thanks for having me back, guys.